Hey, what's up? And welcome back to another Learn Electronics for Beginners video. In this video, we'll be talking more about math for electronics. We'll be working with and manipulating equations. Algebra is a scary word, so we won't be calling it that. Really, we're just going to be going over some simple rules for solving equations. I've also included a circuit demonstration to help show how the math applies to a real world scenario. If you happen to watch my Halloween pumpkins video from a while back where I used a whole bunch of LED lights, stick around until the end and I'll show you something simple you could try with just a small battery and an LED that gives you a hint how I made that work. And it's closely related to the circuit I'll be demonstrating in this video. It's super easy and cool, but let's talk about equations first. Ah, equations. Equations are all about equality. If you exist on the planet Earth, you're probably familiar with the concept. One dollar is equal to four quarters, one goat is equal to five chickens, one hungry dude on a date with a not hungry girlfriend equals sharing is caring. Well, something like that. Anyway, let's look at an example. Yeah, this is technically an equation. It shows an equality. Perhaps you were expecting something more complicated. But complicated things are built on simple principles. Here's some other ways we could write this equation. Often in an equation we have unknown values we need to solve for. In this instance, it's pretty obvious what x represents, but it can get significantly more complicated. Whatever the case, the secret to solving for an unknown in an equation is isolating the unknown to one side of our equal sign. Okay, let's make it simpler. Although it's pretty obvious what x equals here, let's solve for it anyway by isolating it on one side of the equation. To do that, we're going to divide 5 by itself on the left side of the equation. Anything divided by itself equals 1, and 1 times anything equals the same thing. But here's the problem. Once we've done this, we no longer have an equation. All we have is lies, because x can't equal 10 in our original equation. Here's a golden rule of manipulating equations. Anything you do on one side of the equation, you must also do to the other side of the equation for the equation to remain true. So in this case, when we divide 5 by itself on the left side of the equation, we must also divide the other side of the equation by 5. In this case, we end up with x equals 2. If we replace x in the original equation with 2, we'll find our equation is still an equation since both sides are equal. If this has been painfully easy for you so far, first off, kudos for still watching. Second, I'm glad. I keep saying electronics is easy. The one most important equation that you'll use most often in electronics is no more complicated than what we've just covered. It's called Ohm's Law, and everyone who knows anything about electronics knows it by heart. Let's take a look to connect what I've just talked about to how it applies to electronics. So the letters are just placeholders for numbers, and they are expressing a relationship which we'll talk about in a minute. But first let's talk about what the letters represent. If you've been following the Learn Electronics for Beginners series, these letters should look familiar to you. In the metric prefixes video, I talked about the different symbols and units we use to express electrical concepts. I want to reiterate the difference between the symbols we use in equations as shown on the left here and the units we use to express actual quantities on the right. Think of the letters on the left as containers, and the letters on the right are the tags used to identify what belongs in each container. So if you had an empty bottle of ketchup and you had a drinking fountain that dispensed, well, ketchup, you would know to put the ketchup in the ketchup container because it's red and obviously not water. The red color is like our unit symbols on the right, identifying what it is, and the ketchup bottle is like our equation symbols on the left, holding space for our ketchup. Anyway, back in my very first safety video, we talked about the concepts of voltage, current, and resistance. This equation expresses the relationship between these concepts. We'll talk more about Ohm's Law later on, though. Let's not get distracted. So, often when we're dealing with circuits, we'll know two of the values in this equation, but we'll need to find the third value. Oh, and by the way, when two letters are written next to each other like this, it means they're to be multiplied. The multiplication symbol is assumed. So, let's fill our containers with a couple random values as an example. Say we have 5 volts and 330 ohms, for instance. Is this looking familiar yet? It's the exact same equation we were just looking at earlier but with different numbers. So again, to solve this equation, we just need to isolate our unknown so it's by itself on one side of the equation. 
We'll do this by dividing 330 by itself to end up with 1. And since 1 times anything equals the same thing, we can just do away with all the nonsense and just leave the I by itself. I stands for current. Now, we need to do this same thing to the other side of the equation for the equation to remain true. So we'll divide 5 by 330 to end up with 0 0.015 rounded to the third digit, since it repeats forever. Now, to be proper in all that, let's flex our metric prefixes muscles and convert this to milliamps by moving the decimal over three places to end up with 15 milliamps. You might be wondering why I didn't pick easier values to work with for this example. I could have picked 5 volts and 5 ohms to end up with 1 amp. Easy. But I picked these very specific values because I have a very specific real world scenario I want to show you that'll help you understand how this math stuff applies in real life. I'm going to show you how to set up a simple LED circuit. When you're designing a circuit, you start with the end result in mind and work backwards from there. So what do we want to accomplish? Well, we want to create light. This isn't an LED video, but there are three things about LEDs we need to know. First, polarity matters. All you need to know about that right now is the shorter of the two leads, the little pokey pokies on there needs to connect to the negative side of whatever low voltage DC power source we're using, be it a battery or otherwise. It should be DC, not AC. We'll talk about that later down the road. Batteries are DC. Don't go plugging these into your wall outlet. That's AC. That's bad. I mean, technically it can be AC since some like Christmas LED string lights are built in series and run on AC and they flicker and it's maddening, but still don't go plugging these into a wall outlet until you know what you're doing. Just leave those wall outlets alone for now. Go watch my safety video. Don't die. Okay, the second thing we need to know is that we need to limit the amount of current going into our LED. An LED can only handle up to 20 milliamps. Any more than that and it'll fry. That might sound like fun, but it really isn't. It just kind of goes out. No fireworks or anything. It's lame. If you want fireworks, fuses work better. Check out my bad fuses video. Maybe we'll blow up some resistors someday too. Those are fun. But anyway, back on topic. We need to limit the amount of current going to our LED. We do this by using a resistor. A resistor provides resistance to current flow. Let's look back at our Ohm's Law equation real quick. So we know we need our current to be 20 milliamps or less. Let's pick a not so arbitrary value, say, oh, I don't know, 15 milliamps. When we're working with equations and metric prefixes, we need to make sure all our units are the same. So you can convert milliamps back to 0 0.015 amps, or you could also just get in the habit of using that EE key on your calculator like I talked about in the previous video. Instead of converting it to 0 0.015, we would just enter it on our calculator as 15EE-3 according to our metric prefixes, symbols, and values chart that I said you should memorize. This is probably the easiest way and least prone to errors, but that's all personal preference. You do you. I'll show you it each way in a second. Remember though, the point of metric prefixes is to convey information easily. So when you're looking at a circuit schematic, you aren't looking at something like this. So I picked 5 volts earlier simply because it's a commonly used value. We could technically pick any values for either our voltage or resistance as long as it all equates to the 15 milliamps. Ideally, we would pick our voltage and resistance based on what items we have on hand. Say, for instance, all we had to work with was a 12 volt battery. We could insert that value and calculate what our resistance should be to arrive at the 15 milliamps we want. But again, in our case, I picked 5 volts, so crunching the numbers and solving for our resistance, we come to 330 ohms. What a coincidence! It's almost like I planned things. Well, technically 330 point someone really likes threes, but remember we rounded off the repeating digits earlier when we calculated current. If we included all those extra ones and fives here, we would get the 330 we were shooting for. But this highlights another point. In electronics, we work in tolerances typically. On paper, when we calculate things, we're dealing with ideal scenarios. Real life isn't like that. What we're aiming for is close enough. That's also why I chose 15 milliamps instead of 20 milliamps, even though LEDs can handle up to 20 milliamps. It gave me a buffer to work with. We'll talk more about tolerance, accuracy, and precision and all that later on in another video, but let's actually put this simple circuit together and see our math in action. I'll select a 330 ohm resistor from my stash. 
I love my resistor boxes. If you happen to have a 3D printer, I'll see if I can get a link in the description to these so you can make your own if you want. But back on topic, the resistor isn't directional like the LED. We'll connect either end of the resistor to the longer lead of the LED. Again, connect the negative terminal, that's the black lead in my case, to the shorter of the two legs on the LED. Last, we'll just hook up the positive side, that's the red lead, on our voltage source set to 5 volts to the other side of our resistor. That's it. Easy! See, there is a point to all this nonsense math. It's helpful. Alright, now we don't need to use a resistor to light up an LED. I set up a scenario where we used one simply to provide some hands-on work with equations. I have a few more things to cover with equations, but this video is getting a little long, so I'll save that for the next video. I did say I'd show you something cool, though, that you can do with a battery and an LED. Hopefully you're still here to see it. Woohoo! No resistor required for these. This works on the same principle my LED brick lights from my binary pumpkin counter video used. An LED takes a certain amount of voltage to turn on. It's about 2 to 3 volts depending on the LED. If you put too much voltage across an LED, remember voltage is pressure. It'll push too much current through it and burn it up, which is why we needed a resistor earlier. I used a 12 volt battery in my pumpkin video, and I got away with not using resistors because I used exactly enough LEDs end to end in series to divide my 12 volt supply down to only 2 or 3 volts per LED. Well, these 3 volt button cell batteries happen to be the perfect voltage to turn on an LED without burning it up. Granted, it might be a bit much voltage for the red and yellow LEDs since they take closer to 2 volts, but batteries actually have an electrochemical internal resistance that limits the amount of current that they can put out, and with lithium batteries, like I'm using, that internal resistance is rather high and increases as they discharge. But that's a bunch of nonsense. Let's just appreciate how cool this is. You can buy bulk 3 volt batteries and LEDs for pretty cheap. Think of all the possibilities. Wedding decorations, rainbow colored snowballs for snowball fights. Okay, well, don't do that. We don't want to be littering lithium batteries everywhere. Be responsible. Also, don't eat lithium batteries. That's bad. But what ideas do you have? If you had 200 of these, what would you do with them? Here's what I did. Alright, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one. This is Life Meet Lightning, bringing a little lightning into your life. Flim right, left. Flim right, left. No, stop biting. Stop biting! I tried to practice the drums. Stop it. Para para diddle, para para diddle.